Hello, my Time to Level Up listeners, and welcome back. Today, we have my online business manager, Linda Carlini of Aqua Blue Virtual Services. Have you ever wondered what you should be delegating, who you should be delegating it to? What's the difference between a virtual assistant and an online business manager or an OBM, as they sometimes are referred to? Well, you are going to find out. You're also going to find out what you could take out of your business if you're a business owner and have someone else do so that you can focus in on what you want to do and the whole reason you started a business in the first place. All right, sit, buckle up and listen in to my conversation with Linda. You're listening to the Time to Level Up podcast. I'm your host, business life coach, Andrea Libros. I help women in business commit to their own growth personally and professionally. Each week, I'll bring you strategies to help you think clearly, gain confidence, make your time productive, turn every obstacle into an opportunity, and finally overcome the overwhelm so that you can make money and manage life. Let's create a plan so you have a profitable business, successful career, and best of all, live with unapologetic ambition. Are you ready to drop the drama and figure out the how in order to reach your goals? You're in the right place. It's time to level up. Let's do this. Hello, my friends, my Time to Level Up listeners. I have a very, very, very special guest with me today. I have Linda Carlini, who is my online business manager or OBM. And she is way more than a virtual assistant. I will we'll get into that in a little bit. But we were talking yesterday. We have kind of a weekly meeting on Mondays to get my to get me in line. And she helps me. She helps manage me. I'm going to say that. She does. Um, and we were talking about my podcast and guests and how I've started to have guests that are clients and guests that are experts. And then all of a sudden I said, wait a second, you need to be the guest expert because you are an expert in what you do. So here we are the next day recording. We didn't waste any time. We are back at it the next morning, like literally 24 hours later. So I am going to have her introduce herself, and then we were going to get into what it is like to do what she does, who she helps, why people need her, why I need her, why you all need her, and she's probably going to tell you some things you never even thought about before. So without further ado, Linda, tell us all the parts of you, because there's lots. Oh, goodness. Yes. So, oh, good morning, Andrea. It's, it's good to be able to be on here and chat with you this morning. I know like we chat every week, but it's it's cool to be able to be here on the podcast with you. So I'm excited to talk to everybody. All right. So basically, I am a certified online business manager and I help over, overwhelmed entrepreneurs. Most of the time they're solopreneurs, but get them out of the craziness of their day where they're here and there, and they're not really sure what's going on and get things down to where it's more manageable and organized and streamlined. So their day can be much more manageable and they can get back to loving their businesses because a lot of time their businesses have become something that they're just almost resenting because it's just taking away so much time and they're not able to really do um, what their zone of genius is anymore because of running a business is a lot more than just serving your clients. <laughs> and it <is>. so <laughs> that's it where is. it really, yeah, it really gets to be a little bit crazy whenever you've got a lot of things, moving parts that need to be managed. So that's my favorite part is just getting things organized. I am a nine on the Colby for details and, and fact finder. So like, I love finding all the details and making sure everything is in place and in order. So um, tell us all yeah. the other parts of, tell us about your other hats that you wear. Cause this is very interesting too. Uh, <laughs> the, the, my, my path. So, um, basically, uh, I guess you want me to kind of start with where, how I got started, right? Is yeah. That tell where, us. Okay. Tell us what you also do when you're not doing this. When I'm not doing this. 
<laughs> we were kind of joking about that yesterday, weren't we? So yes. Um, besides uh, running my online business, I also have um, a small cattle ranch. We have about 30 head of cattle. And so we're not working in the office. We're working out in a pasture <laughs> where we're managing um, it's, it's beef cattle. So they're, you know, calving. Sometimes we have to help with that. Um, and then just the day to day things of taking care of our cows. We also have horses, so that's a task in itself as well, but we love it. It's not necessarily a job. It's just something we enjoy doing. We love working. Our kids help us with everything. Um, We're teaching them life skills um, as well in the process, but, you know, they're not sitting inside playing video games or whatever. We're like always outside doing something. But yeah, so the kettle is a big piece of our um, day to day because they need attention every day. (laughs) Yeah, so Linda sometimes is like she's boxering me back and she's walking around out there in the pasture. I know she is. I know she is, but that's okay. Cause she can do multiple things at the same time. And um, also living in central Florida is not necessarily, I mean, there's so much cattle there, but I don't think that's when people think about Florida, at least from where I live, they're not thinking about cattle. So that's also an interesting fact. Cause a lot of times you're at the beach one day, you're in a pasture another day, and then you're yeah. <laughs> in front of your computer on the third day, or all in one day. Right? Yeah. Hey, it's very possible. And that's the great thing about Florida. A lot of people think of just beaches and Disney World, right? Whenever you think of Florida. <laughs> and there, yeah. there are so many pasture lands. Um, ag, the cattle industry is huge for Florida, actually, compared to just our tourism industry. And so um, citrus and cattle are huge pieces of Florida. And so it's great to just drive the back roads of Florida and enjoy all of our pasture land to actual, you know, the real native Florida, um, how it used to be. So yeah. way back it's, before yeah. Disney World. <laughs> Although yeah. your kids are at Disney World right now. Yeah, they doing, are up there. Doing <laughs> cattle things though. Right? They are, yeah. FFA stuff. It's yeah. yeah. So they, they'll be having like cattle sessions and feeding sessions of like you know, percentages of feed and things like that. Okay. <laughs> things you don't Not think of, time. but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So all right, so just tell us quickly, how did you become an online business manager? All righty. So good question. So it's actually, it kind of started where I, um, I was staying at home with my kids back when they were babies and I was helping my husband run his business. He has a construction business and I was doing all the things in the office for him while he was out in the field. And so, um, you know, raising kids and running a business definitely took a lot because they, I had three kids under the age of five. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a little bit hectic back in the day, but, um, I just, learned a lot about running a business and and I enjoyed it and thinking about just the strategies and stuff and making systems in our business easier so I could actually have time to spend with the kids during the day and still, you know, make sure that everything's run smoothly in the business. And so as they got older, I went ahead and, and started working at the elementary school with them because I could be right there with them. I could work when they were at school and I could be home when they were home. And so I did that um, for 10 years. I worked at the elementary school. And after my youngest one went on to middle school, I just kind of felt lost. I mean, because I just... It, there was no room to grow and I just wasn't challenged every day and I just didn't feel like I was making the impact I wanted to make. And, and so I revisited what I wanted to do now that my kids were older and didn't need me as much anymore. And I um, decided, well, I've served my husband and his business all these years. So why don't I help other business owners? And so that's when I decided to go with a virtual assistant because it would still give me that freedom and flexibility that I was already so used to. But um, I could, you know, work anywhere. Right. So Mm -hmm. um, and with anyone. So I wasn't tied down to just local businesses. And so I started doing that. And I just realized like I needed more. So I I love like strategizing with business owners and looking at like the bigger picture, not just like doing the admin tasks for them, but just being a partner in their business and helping them be successful and and grow. And so I decided to get my um, OBM online business manager certification uh, last year just so I could up level my skills and serve my clients better. And over the years, um, as I've been doing this, I've really realized that I love building out the systems for business owners. So I love helping them because 
most people, you know, you start your business because you love that that freedom that you feel like an, an, a business owner will have. And so, but you have a passion for your business, right? You, like you have, a, I mean, most people, you started your business because you love what you're doing too. And so I just, I, um, I really recognize the fact that I love building out those systems so they can focus on the things they love doing. And these, there's so many better ways of operating your business than a lot of people realize because a lot of business owners are more creative. They're in that space and not so much, of, right. um, you know, thinking of the organizing and, and how things run and, and those kind of boring tasks, but right. we can, we can make that better and make it um, more efficient. So you can focus in that zone more. And so that's how I've, I've, I've landed where I am today. And so um, I, I love every single day of my work week and it's been an amazing journey. <laughs> I love it. So Linda has helped me there. I originally went to Linda because I needed what I thought was kind of an, like an onboarding system, help in automating the process of having new clients come on. And I had heard about this thing called Dubsado. There's a hundred softwares out there to use, but I had heard about Dubsado. A lot of coaches had used it. So I literally went on Upwork, which is kind of a clearing house, we'll call it a, a place where freelancers can go to find jobs. And you, if you're looking for someone can post the job that you need someone to do. And anyway, that is how we matched up. So originally Linda helped me create an onboarding system using the software at Dubsado. But since then, and we have been working together, I think it was February of 2020. So more than a year, a year and almost a half, we have done tons of stuff. And what I have found is that one of the best parts about having an online business manager is she asks me questions that I have not thought about at all myself, because I don't even know what I don't know, first of all. And then, uh, and two, there are things that could improve the way my business flows that my brain just doesn't even go to the go there. And she goes there for me even though to the because to her that comes like second nature. So tell me, what do you find that entrepreneurs, an onboarding system of clients is one thing. What else do they really not think about that could help them improve their business? All righty. So yeah, an onboarding system is one thing, but um, your onboarding system could be a lot more. I mean, you could really dive into like the details of how you actually onboard your clients. So you can really give them that great experience from the beginning of your relationship together, because that's that first impression that you really want to wow your client with. And so I love um, kind of giving some details of how they can improve their on um, their onboarding system as well, as well as like follow-up systems. That's one thing a lot of people, like it falls through the cracks, whether you're following up with leads or you're following up with a client you've been working with for, you know, six months and you want some feedback from them that you can share with the world. You know, a lot of people don't think of uh, those systems being a part of um, a really big piece of working with clients and leads. And so that's one thing that I really, um, like to point out because I feel like people are are, are dropping the ball and, and whenever it comes mm-hmm. to things like that. And so building out not just, you know, your onboarding system in Dubs Auto is one thing, but how you actually are managing your leads, your clients um, on a project management tool is another thing where a lot of people are like, I, I don't even know what a project management tool is. And so we kind of dive into, you know, how to, how to use it most effectively, how to get it set up. So you're getting the best use out of it. And then, I, I typically pick um, one that's less techy. There's so many project management tools out there, but if, if there's a big learning curve, you're not going to use it. So that's why I opted to go with one that's not as um, difficult to use, which is Trello in my case. I, I use that with all my clients that haven't already established a project management tool. So that's one thing that I love getting organized and then just tracking your metrics and looking at where you're spending your um, time and effort in, if that's really bringing in more traffic as you're writing your blog post or sharing your podcast and where the traffic's coming from. Are they just clicking on direct links? Are they coming from social media? And just tracking those details so you can really get a, a, a bigger picture of your metrics and where you should be focusing your efforts. 
And so those are a few things, um, of, you know, just thing, things that I look at that um, maybe a business owner hasn't thought about or really thought that needs to be improved. Mm-hmm. You know? So. so we, so Linda and I use Trello a lot, well, exclusively as our project management tool. And what I've found is what it's helping to do also is, is when you do one thing once, and then if we put it in Trello, if we put the system we used in Trello, when we do it again, it becomes so much easier. So not only can it like manage the project, but it can also kind of, I would like to say, sort of store the process and have all of the pieces readily available right in there. So that's something that I've, I also know, notice in my clients, usually they're not just doing something once, but they're doing it multiple times, whether it's creating a workshop or even putting together a presentation. Um, Some of my corporate clients, like they're always creating agendas or presentations and, and they can even use Trello for that. So creating that repeatable process, I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah. You're not recreating the wheel every single time we do it, right? You, you're right. getting the most efficient and effective way the first time and you can build on it, but you're not having to start from scratch. And so that's saving you time is keeping you consistent. And it's also helping you like put your best out there, right? So, cause yes. you're always improving it. So you're not just kind of throwing it out there on the fly and getting it done. It's something that you've really worked hard to build. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, creating those things and, and you know, setting a board up for for a launch or setting up cards that you can copy with the checklist. So you're not recreating that checklist every single time. It's got all the pieces in it. So you don't forget something. Gosh, it's so helpful. I use, yeah, I use it in so many different ways that, yeah, it definitely helps. (laughs) The other thing that we've been using a lot of is Google Drive and Google Drive really integrates well with Trello. And I, even yesterday, we figured out a new thing on Google Drive. So I think I geek out. I'm like, oh my God, we can do this with Google Drive. (laughs) I get all excited. (laughs) Linda's like, I think you can. Let's figure it out. So we figure stuff out all the time. (laughs) And I know there's people out there that don't necessarily love Google Drive, but I would encourage you to continue to foster your love of Google Drive one step at a time. Because again, right, like that's a that's a really good tool to keep things flowing and to using that comments part of suggestions of Mm -hmm. like, for example, Google Docs will all the Google pieces, but you love Google Drive too, right? Yeah, I do love Google Drive. And there's a few reasons why I really, I recommend that for all my clients is because for one, like whenever you're collaborating with other people, it just makes it so much easier to work together. You're not having to, you know, update a document and then reshare it with them. Like they can see it in live time right there on Google Drive. And so you can easily share the documents. They're all stored in one place. And everyone, you know, can have access to that that same file. Um, but it really helps whenever you are working with multiple people and you can easily just share this document with somebody that could help you if they're helping like copywriting or something, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're not having to give up a, a bunch of access to all these other things. You're just sharing that document and it's already shared with your team maybe. And so it just cuts out a lot of um, the back end work of, you know, getting those. It does. Done. It does. So, yeah. Yes. And we all can work from home too and have dogs and other animals in the background. I'm just going to add that in there. It's yes. so fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's little but mighty. She little but mighty. <laughs> little mighty. Yes. So I think if I had to name like the top three things that I think I'm going to, I'm going to say my top three and then you, you see what you think. My top three reasons why every entrepreneur should have an online business manager. Actually, before I do that, tell us, what is the difference between a VA and an online business manager? Oh, good question. All right. So yeah. a VA, a virtual assistant, is more of somebody that's kind of doing what you're telling them to do, right? So you're giving them tasks, they're getting things done. And it's not necessarily that they're thinking of new ways or, or new things that need to be done. Like they're not ahead of you. An OBM, online business manager, wants, needs to be more ahead of you. Like they're anticipating what needs to happen next, or they're looking at goals for the future and planning your 90 day goals out with you. And they're looking at what pieces need to happen 
to help you reach those goals. So they're more of a partner in your business. And so they're helping manage all the pieces that need to be in place for you to actually reach those goals. And so a lot of times, maybe an OBM is not the one doing the work. They're delegating some things, but they're making sure everything's getting done by the right person at the right time. And so that's taking all of that weight off your shoulders as the business owner. So you're not the one having to make sure, oh, this Mm -hmm. person's doing that and that person's doing this. And I've got this to do and that to do. Like they're just, uh, the OBM really partners with you as the business owner and, and wants to be as successful in your business as you do. And so they're invested in, in, and, and making things happen just as if it was their own business. Yeah. And I think that's the key. So sometimes people say to me, well, what should I just hire a virtual assistant? So one of the things, and I have done this. Okay. So this is actually, I don't even know if you knew this, but anyway, so before Linda, I did have a couple virtual assistants that I would say, like I went through quote unquote, like I just, it wasn't working. And I think the reason it wasn't working is because they were consistently waiting for me to tell them super specifically what to do, which I could do. Okay. Which I totally could do, but I almost sometimes didn't even know enough to know what to tell them to do. And Mm -hmm. they did not, um, and nor should they have, because it really wasn't what they were supposed to do. Although I didn't know enough at that point, they weren't saying to me, Hey, yeah, I can do one, two, three, and four, but after that, it's going to be six and seven. So I think we should do two and three differently. So that when we get to six and seven, that's going to go smoothly. So with the online business manager with Linda, like she's already up to six and seven and I didn't even know six and seven existed. (laughs) And that is why I find this so valuable. So, you know, what are my top three reasons? I would say one, just having that extra brain in terms of systems and processes and thinking ahead. Okay. So like the extra brain, I would say time I mean, a lot of times she and I communicate, um, well, through Trello, but through Voxer sometimes too. And so when I'm in between clients, I can just Voxer her and say, hey, we don't even need to talk about this until next week, but will you remember that we need to talk about this? So I can have that sort of time-saving to me, it's a time-saving mechanism because someone else is kind of thinking about things even maybe ahead of me. So that's a good thing. And then the third piece that people may not even recognize, I guess, is that you do feel like you, once you develop a relationship with someone, you do feel like you kind of have a partner and that they know what's going on in your business. And you, it does give you a little bit of freedom in a sense of like, I could walk away for a few days and anything in the background would keep running. Now, no one would be getting coached. Okay. But that's okay. Cause I planned my time like that, but everything else in the background would keep running because Linda keeps it running. So I don't know. What do you think? What are what would your top few reasons why someone would need this kind of help? Yeah. I I love hearing, I love hearing your thought process on that. So it makes me feel good. Like I feel like I'm accomplishing my goals. Right. Um, yes. Because that is like, that is it, like having that second brain and, and being able to give, I love like the strategy part of it. So I think strategy is a big piece of it. And so giving feedback that you just don't know, right. And, mm-hmm. and because either you haven't done it before, or you just haven't done it a different way. And so having that second brain with a different outlook definitely uh, is helpful. And so I think that's one piece. And the second piece definitely would be time, um, and because you're you're not the only one. Everything doesn't fall on you, and so you don't feel like you have to be doing everything. If if you're bus- if you're not in your business doing things, then it's not running right. And so mm-hmm. that's saving you a ton of time and helping you um, focus on serving more clients because I mean, let's face it, if you were having to do all these back end things, you definitely couldn't take on more clients because right. you would be working <laughs> nonstop and then you would be missing out on time with your family. And so that's I mean, that's definitely not it. And so freedom would be the last piece. And and I, I, that's pretty much what you're saying. Like yeah, you know, having having the freedom to do what you your your wanting to do, whether it is serve clients or it is going to lunch with your daughter, (laughs) you know, whichever one. 
being able to do that and not having to worry about if this is running right or if this is getting posted or shared or, you know, just those things, having that time freedom for open space in your mind and getting everything out of your mind and just on Trello or on Voxer yes. and it's not cluttering your brain, <laughs> you know, yes. that's, that's like taking all that overwhelm off of you. And so those are, yeah, that's definitely like that last piece is that the freedom from being just overwhelmed and exhausted <laughs> sometimes. It's true. So, it's so I help a lot of times. Um, one of the things that I do in my business as a as a way to coach or another kind of coaching service is I help business owners who probably have a team. They have two, three, up to maybe 20 people on their team. I call it like, let's create an entrepreneurial operating system, right? So that is pretty big picture though. We're creating 10 year goals and we're creating quarterly goals. They can't necessarily even have that kind of operating system happen unless they have the kind of support that Linda would provide. And maybe if it's an online business, she's the right person. If it's a brick and mortar, which some of them are, they have like an admin, but not in an office manager. It's like an admin and an office manager combined kind of. It's not just admin because admin's just tasks. It is managing and thinking ahead. So I think that a lot of times what happens with my clients is that they've their business has grown. They're seeing like, okay, I can do this. There, there, there is revenue coming in. It is profitable. But in order to get to that next level, something needs to change. And this is kind of where I think this element comes in. And it's not just all about social media people. And P.S., we are scheduling those posts ahead of time. I am not on Facebook every time <laughs> scheduling. <laughs> just that's a little secret. Yeah. But it's but and Linda does schedule out for me. But she does like that's probably the easiest thing in a way. But there's so <laughs> much more that's going on. So it's not all about social media. Okay. So what would be your one biggest piece of advice to an Gosh. entrepreneur? Oh, my biggest piece of advice. It's just oh goodness. I would just say that you need to you created your business because you have a passion for it, right? And so really reflect on that and make sure that you're loving your business. And if you're not, there's better ways of doing things than what you're doing. And so looking at how things are operating and getting systems in place are, are really going to um, help you uh, keep that love for your business and be able to serve your clients best because you are able to stay in your zone. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would just say, yeah, getting you, those yeah, systems you in place. You create. You're right because you created your business because you wanted to do the business. You wanted to offer the service or sell the product, mm -hmm. not right. because you wanted to spend time creating an onboarding system or posting things or any of that. Right, <laughs> creating those... payment plans, all that stuff. <laughs> That's not what you wanted yep. to be doing. Yeah. So, if you want to stay in your business in the way doing what you want to do. This is an excellent tool to have in your, on your, it's an, I wasn't saying in your pocket, but it's almost, it's way more than that. It's, this is an excellent um, way to create a partner to help you do the stuff in your business that you don't necessarily love doing. Right. Exactly. And yeah. they always say like what you did up to this point, is not going to work to get you to that next Correct. level? Right. So yeah. you have to change things up a little bit if you, if you want to grow. And so and you've even experienced that in your business. I am. Right? It's exciting. It's exciting and scary at the same time, but it's all good things. So <laughs> it's all good things. All right. So if someone wanted to find you, I mean, they can always ask me, but how can they find you? Alrighty, so they can find me online. I have a website. It's aquablue.virtualservices.com, but I am on Instagram at aquablue.virtualservices or Facebook um, is the same, aquablue.virtualservices. So any of those places, I hang out around there um, and feel free to send me a message. Let me know yeah. what you're schedule, struggling with. <laughs> schedule a call with Linda and see if she can help you. Or she can help you figure out how to find help, one or the other. Yeah, and exactly. Other. And I, yeah, I and I, I did start a group program for coaches and solopreneurs to help them, not necessarily if they're ready to hire me to build all these systems, but I guide them through getting these systems built out. And so that's another option if you're not ready for like one-on-one -on -one work with me. 
Um, I've started the Systems for Freedom Accelerator, where people can work with me for three months and get their systems built out. And it's, a you know, they're learning from me and being able to really get things done without being a little confused or unsure of what needs to be done, right? I give you a right. clear roadmap of what needs to happen. So Yeah, so if you are someone who was really tied to the thought, if you want it in my words, the thought that you need to know how it all goes together. I am not mm-hmm. tied to that thought, by the way. I do not need to know all the processes and the pieces. But if you are tied to the thought that you want to be the one to do it, Linda can help you too through that group program that she's created. Yeah. So, but I would, co- I'm going to coach you right now, you people listening. Do you really need to know every step of the way? What's that getting you? Why do you need to know that? So that's just a side note. There's my coach you for this podcast. All right. It has been awesome doing this. This is a, yes. this is a Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. call versus our Monday morning at 9 a.m. call. This is a little more mm-hmm. fun even. It is. It's exciting to talk <laughs> about all these things and see how we've grown together. Yeah, it is. Okay, everybody. So go assess what systems and processes do you have in place in your business now? Are they working for you? Do you think possibly they could be better? Even if you don't know how they could be better, do you think they could be better? And if so, how are you going to make them better? What do you need to do in order to get them working for you to their utmost ability? And Linda might be able to help you with that. So what did you think about as you were listening? Were you thinking about things that maybe you could take off your plate? Were you thinking about how having someone else in your business thinking about it just as much as you do could be a huge benefit? If you are, I urge you to reach out to Linda or me or anyone you know to help you find the right person for you and your business. And I don't think your business can be too small or too big to have that partner. When I work with my clients, I often tell them, you have just hired an employee, whether or not they own their own business or not. I see myself as a team member and helping them be the best version of themselves. So who could help you be the best version of yourself or what combo of people do you need? And who is your coach? If you don't have a coach, I would be honored to be that person. Lately, I've been doing a lot of deep dives with my clients. And by that, I mean, we set aside a half day and we take a deep dive into their business or their career and really map out how we could make the next six or 12 months the best ever. Oftentimes, an online business manager or an assistant is part of that equation. So if you don't have a coach, I would love to be that person. Let's chat. You can head over to my website at andrealibros.com and book a call, and we can chat about What type of coaching is best for you? Maybe this deep dive is the best way to start. Perhaps it's one-on-one coaching or group coaching or even what I call my runway to freedom, which is for business owners who have teams and need to find more time in their business and have the confidence that they can step away and things will still run. So head over to andrealibros.com, book a call, and we'll figure out what's best for you. All right, my friends, have a great day. Until next time, always remember, it can be your time to level up. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're ready to commit to personal and professional growth, move forward, make money, and manage life, head to andrealibros.com. That's A-N-D-R-E-A-L-I-E-B-R-O-S-S dot com to find out about the ways we can work together. Until next time, go level up.